Hey folks. Okay, y'all want to hear a little story? Once upon a time, there was an old biker dude. Okay, had me a good little stretch break here. Um, I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> Just riding. It's, uh, oh, I don't know, about 4 35 o'clock. I guess I'll, I guess I need to start looking for a, a place to set my little tent out tonight. But uh, I hadn't really given it much thought. I've just been riding around. But uh, I'm down here in South Georgia right now. And uh, oh, there's lots of little stealthy places to camp down here. I'll probably find something. I may just throw my cot out at a rest area somewhere and sleep under the stars, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But right now I'm gonna go adventure seeking. Here we go. I like roads like this right here. You know, just way out in the middle of nowhere. Just ride. Sixteen Highway 57 in Georgia. I'm uh, slowly working my way north. I guess I'll take me another little five or ten minute break here. I keep getting pretty stiff after about 30 to 45 minutes of riding. It's just from being out of shape and uh, not seasoned for the saddle. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've I got about a thousand miles in the last four days, so that ought to start help, starting to help break me in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so the 2024 Dumbest Dude at Daytona Bike Week award goes to yours truly. Look at this sunburn. Now, I know that's kind of gross. Hard to look at. I apologize. But, you know, I filmed a 30 minute video about preparation. You know, all the things you need to have in your trailer, camping gear, safety stuff, motorcycle. I mean, I covered in pretty good detail. I covered all my sponsors and, you know, yippee yap, yippity yap. I left out one little thing. Uh, when riding to Daytona, and it's your first trip out in the sun for the season, uh, apply sunscreen. I look like some 300 pound biker's been whacking on my face with a big old Adirondack baseball bat. Feels like it too. 
believe where I slept last night. But for reasons I cannot disclose um, at this time, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. I think I'm going to go home and change the trailer. Get my camper trailer. Just sleeping in the tent stuff. I just don't know about that. As I mentioned, I'm in Elberton, Georgia, uh, considered and their claim to fame is to be the granite capital of the world. There's a huge granite vein here in Georgia. <coughs> a lot of people are aware of that. Say for instance, Stone Mountain down in the Atlanta metropolitan area is a huge piece of granite. Um, you can Google Stone Mountain and sort of find out about that. It's pretty interesting material. But um, here in Elberton, Georgia, granite is basically the driving force behind the economy and always has been. It's also one of the reasons Elberton hasn't quite experienced the downturn that say the average um, 
you know, country, non-suburban type little town. Like you travel through all these little towns all over the country, and you know, you see how either the interstate system or, you know, other contributing factors has caused their decline. And a lot of the little downtown buildings, while pretty, you know, and beautiful and nostalgic looking, uh, don't have any businesses in them. Um, you know, almost any small town in America displays a certain element of that. Um, Elberton, on the other hand, has virtually none of that. And a lot of that is because here in Elberton, if you want a job, you can get one. I, uh, now they have, uh, you know, they have their, their, um, element of poverty here and things that's probably a little bit lower than most, uh, small towns. But, I mean, Elberton is a city, you know, it's a pretty sizable little city out here in Elbert County, Georgia, extreme eastern Georgia, but, uh, Everything here is, is granite. Uh, signs for subdivisions, walls, uh, you know, the car wash across the street over there has granite based platforms that the vacuum cleaners are located on. Everything is granite here. <laughs> and like I also mentioned on the way into town, um, Elberton was home to the famous Georgia Guidestones, the mysterious Guidestones that were supposedly supposed to tell the future and all that uh, a couple of a couple of vandals blew it up <laughs> you can uh, actually google that online and, and see about that and, and you know speaking about the guide stones um <laughs> really kind of funny because there were all kinds of conspiracy theories about it that it was rooted in satanism and um, you know, so forth. It, it stood there from, I think it was put up in about 1980 or 78, somewhere around in there. Uh, nobody really ever knows who, um, who was responsible for it exactly. There have been some allegations that it was traced back to, I think, a guy, uh, you know, pretty famous millionaire that lived in Missouri or Arkansas or something like that, but it was never really confirmed that he was the one who financed the uh the finance really kind of interesting material you can google the georgia guidestones and read all about it, it that's uh, kind of entertaining but um you know naturally since i sort of live here in this area i've always known about them but it uh it's interesting reading material y'all check it out
I'm an old biker dude, man. 